All right, now comes the good stuff where we get to talk about how do we get the power of God back. We'll spend the next two sessions talking about this. And so even as we do, let's be anticipating what God is going to do and, and looking for the Holy Spirit to, um, to burden us, to direct us as to how he's leading us to pray and maybe specific things that he's asking you to do to begin to seek him for his power in a whole new way. You know, we first need to understand that we can have more or less of God's power working in our lives. We see that from a passage, for instance, one of many in Acts chapter 6. Acts chapter 6 is where there is a need that arises among some of the widows in the church in Jerusalem, that first church in Jerusalem. And they bring this need of the widows to the apostles and they, and they say, hey, uh, deal with this issue. And the apostles say, well, you know, we have to continue to devote ourselves to prayer and the word but let's find some other people who can handle the situation and do a good job with it. And there were certain criteria that the apostles said that the people chosen to take care of the widow's situation needed to have. And one of the criteria was this, they had to be men who were full of the Holy Spirit. Now just think about that for a minute. They were, they were, we already know there were thousands of people in the church at that time in Jerusalem. And we also know that the scripture teaches that if we belong to Christ, we have the spirit of Christ. So every Christian is indwelt with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives inside of every believer in Jesus. So if the apostles are saying, go find men full of the spirit, then obviously they realize, the apostles realize, and all the Christians realize that we're all sort of in different places in terms of our fullness of the spirit. And so if we realize that the fullness, the degree of the Spirit can move or change in us, well then so does the power of God, because where does the power of God come from in our lives? It comes from Him inside of us. It's, it's the Spirit's power, just like we saw in Acts chapter 1-8, where Jesus said, you'll receive power when? When the Holy Spirit comes on you. The Holy Spirit is the one who empowers us. And so first we need to realize that our level of God's power in our lives can be greater than it is currently. Then the second thing that we need to realize is that we can do something about that. We don't just sit back and kind of wait for God's power to hit me, or we shouldn't think of it as something that's like a, a, a talent given at birth, uh, you, like you're good at uh, singing and I'm not, or you, you know, you're athletic and I'm not, um, you are full of the Spirit and I'm not. No, that's not the case. The scriptures teach us, Paul says in Ephesians 5.18, he says to all the believers, he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I agree with so many commentators that recognize that that's an ongoing command. It's not a one-time thing. In fact, Paul had already said earlier in Ephesians that they were all sealed and marked and indwelt with the Holy Spirit. So while all of us have the Holy Spirit, Paul's urging us to seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit and do so every day and do so throughout the day. Holy Spirit, fill me. I, I want to do what I can in myself to invite the Holy Spirit. There's one pastor that I've heard to say, say it this way. He says he courts the Holy Spirit. He does whatever he can to sort of woo the Holy Spirit to come and to fill his life. So as, as, as you're seeking and as I'm seeking, as we're seeking in our churches to re-experience the power of God's Spirit, let's begin to just welcome the Spirit and just say, come Holy Spirit, just fill me up. Let me do whatever I can do to be ready to have you use me in whatever way it would be for your glory.